apps and data. The vast majority run on-prem or in data centers due to the latency, the application dependency, the data gravity, but also the regulatory compliance. But they lack of the flexibility of a modern cloud as a service experience. And the market, I think, requires to use existing apps and data in an as a service model. So what are the latest trends and what are the learnings you need to know? Flynn Malloy, he's the Vice President GreenLake Marketing at HPE, and he's here to talk about the latest developments on how the cloud comes to you. Welcome, Flynn. Thank you, Ron. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, the as a service market um, is in a tremendous momentum. And what is driving this acceleration? Can you share some insights from research and experience that you have? Well, so yeah, I, uh, let me start with, I think, some of the bigger trends. I think we have all seen, you know, what what cloud has brought to the industry has been nothing short of, of, of shocking and, and, and uh, you know, game changing across the board. The cloud experience, which, uh, you know, is the benchmark experience today, which, you know, we define as, you know, it's uh, automated, self-serve, it's scalable up and down, it's pay-as-you-go, and it's managed for you. And that cloud experience, you know, in the IT world has has really set the benchmark for what the experience is today. And that is an as-a-service, you know, pay-as-you-go way. We, we see that in our consumer lives all the time, right, um, on everything on our, you know, on our iPhones uh, around the world of, you know, I'm looking for, you know, pay as I go. Just, you know, I want to pay and consume for just what I've got. I want someone else to be handling, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the heavy lifting behind the scenes. That as a service experience, I think it's it's permeated our consumer lives and it's permeated our business life. And in IT, it's it's really cloud that has set the benchmark on what that experience is. And it's only accelerating. And I think all of the industry, kind of the classic vendors, the new vendors, young and old, you know, are all looking towards, this movement and we're seeing, you know, a huge shift in the industry started in software, uh, but it's definitely rolling across everything related to IT now. Yeah. And what you see is what you expect as a consumer, you expect in the B2B market as well. And yeah, you speak, I think, daily to customers. Uh, what do they indicate about why they are so eager to embrace this as a service model? You mentioned already the consumer trends and their experience. Can you summarize some key pain points and some needs that you get from your clients? Well, you know, I think one of the things that we're seeing in terms of trends, um, it's very related to the GreenLake business and to where, you know, Hewlett Packard and the broader industry is, is going on as a service is the idea that, um, you know, hybrid is the way of the world of the future. And when we say hybrid, we mean that, you know, it's not an all or nothing uh, proposition. You, you you don't just leave it exactly the way it has been, kind of traditional, um, or all public cloud. Um, that there is, you know, more choice points out there, multi-cloud, you know, there's more choice points, you know, for, you know, our, for example, the GreenLake business, you know, bringing an on-prem exper uh, experience uh, for cloud uh, to the edge, to colos. I think that that hybrid recognition across IT is, is really something that we hear from clients um, that they're looking for and and that it's driven by the data so you know where does the data sit where is it being generated where do the insights need to come from uh, and you know for the workloads that require that data the you know the production workloads the data intensive workloads uh, you know I think those are some of the least um, resi least resistant to moving to cloud you know a lot of them are staying in place the data gravity itself is is huge some of them have you know, Jupiter-sized data gravity, just giant data sets. And, you know, companies are looking for transforming in place. Right? They're looking for an alternative to, you know, the traditional or the public cloud. Um, and what we're doing is, is really kind of delivering something right in the middle, which is to trying to, you know, bring the cloud experience to the data instead of the data to the cloud experience. And that brings that brings that cloud experience I talked about, flexible, pay-as-you-go, managed-for-you um, experience, uh, automated. But it also brings a level of what these workloads require is a level of configurability, a level of flexibility. You know, when you go to the public cloud, for example, it's all homogenous, right? You, you don't really have a choice of, you know, the technologies or, or the different components. You know, it's, it's a very homogenous experience, whereas in the traditional world, it's a very bespoke you know, very customized, very built, you know, one-off 
world. And, you know, we think that as we try to find that middle ground and bring the cloud to customers that are looking for those workloads that, that can't or won't move to the public cloud, let's bring the cloud experience there. And we need to bring with it a level of flexibility and configurability, still modular, uh, but, but configurable for those different workloads. You know, the, the, the configurations that you would put together to run, you know, a highly data intensive data analysis workload, you know, is different than something you might run, uh, you know, for a different workload, for example. And that level of, of blueprints, um, modularity, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're spending a lot of time and energy um, and, and some of the announcements um, coming up are going to relate to how to build that level of flexibility, configurability, while still keeping it modular and scale out. Yeah, and talking about is keeping it modular and, and scalable, can you share some success cases? And I'm also curious what you mentioned about the 23rd of June, where you know, Discover, HP Discover starts. Um, maybe you can tell already a bit, little bit about what kind of developments we can expect in the near future. Yeah, um, uh, happy to, and and it, it's related to what we just talked about, which is, you know, if you think about those data intensive production workloads today um, that have big gravity, that have special security and compliance requirements, you know, for applications that may not be refactored um, or may never be refactored, you know, those use cases across different industries. So healthcare is a perfect example. Take a look at, uh, you know, medical imaging. Um, as, a, as, a, as a workload. Um, you've got to store it, you've got to use it, you've got to analyze it, uh, or electronic health records um, for healthcare. I mean, these are two great workload examples of huge data sets, very private information um, that are, you know, wanting to stay in place, you know, from all the regulations and everything else. And so how do we bring a cloud experience, you know, not only to the underlying platforms, you know, to the infrastructure or the platforms there, but how do we bring that cloud experience to the workload itself so that you can get, you know, a, a cloud experience, you know, that is configured for enterprise class. If you're going to run, for example, you know, uh, an enterprise level uh, electronic health record system, you know, you need a level of security, a level of performance, a level of capacity, uh, flexibility that is you know, built for the enterprise, um, enterprise grade. And, you know, if you think about what's needed to do that, that technology is there. And then if you want to put and apply a cloud experience upon that, uh, you know, that that's a very exciting opportunity. That's a use case to answer your question that that we're really excited about. Um, there's other ones certainly across finance and financial services, the payments industry, uh, manufacturing, you know, in a modern manufacturing facility, uh, you've got transportation, you've got uh, manufacturing itself, every single touch point for what you're manufacturing, um, you know, creates a record. And if every one of those records is round tripping to the public cloud, you know, that creates a cumulative latency that um, is a struggle. It creates, you know, bandwidth issues. There's cost associated with moving in and out. Um, and that's a great example and a use case of the kinds of companies that we're talking to around, you know, what can GreenLake cloud services do for us? How can we, you know, really lean into an on-prem cloud model? It's a single tenant environment, but, you know, bringing the automation, the scalability, the pay-as-you-go, um, and, the, and the managed for you so that you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, availability or performance or capacity management, you know, just like when you put it in the public cloud, all those things kind of happen for you. That's a cloud experience. And being able to bring that to those use cases is a very exciting thing. I think it's, we think it's it's significantly ahead of anything else in the market here. And it's landing right firmly in the middle of, uh, you know, it's not kind of the classic traditional, you know, bespoke world or the full homogenous, you know, public cloud world, it's something in the middle. And we think that, you know, this is an emerging market and is more and more uh, of your viewers and, uh, and, and folks in the IT industry see this, you know, as a viable emerging market and an opportunity uh, you know, we think we're going to continue to invest and we think customers are going to continue to come along with us in that journey. Yeah, some great examples. And I can't wait till June 23rd when HP Discover will kick off. Um, so I just advise everybody to join me, to join Flynn at the 23rd at Discover from HPE. And for the audience as well, thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.